You flip on the TV for some laughs today, and you've got so many options. But where did it all begin? At the end of the day, all our favorite sitcoms in some way owe a lot to I Love Lucy, led by the revolutionary Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. So how does one go about making television history? Well, first they had to conquer some behind the scene issues to get the ball rolling. And it took an army to keep this comedy going too. They mean us. I'm your host, Nostalgic Nick, and it's time to uncover why the world decided to love Lucy and just how they set the bar for comedy so high. It'll help our vibrations. Lucy! What? Don't you like the way I vibrate? If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to give it a thumbs up for us and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a memory. Now let's unpack some mysteries of the iconic I Love Lucy. Doubts all around. Before America met the wacky and dysfunctional Ricardos, Lucille Ball had a radio show called My Favorite Husband, with Richard Denning playing her husband. As Liz and George Cooper, two people who live together and like it. After its surprising success, CBS approached Ball to develop it into a series, keeping Denning as the hubby. That's where Lucille first put her foot down, only making the series if her real-life husband took Denning's place. Desi and his family came to America from Cuba, and CBS didn't think America would tune in to watch him. So husband and wife got creative and first made their own traveling vaudevillian act that traveled along with Desi's Roomba band. And wouldn't you know it, people went crazy for them. There are two things that I can't eat for breakfast, lunch and dinner. <laughs> and the professor skit was the final piece of the puzzle that convinced CBS. <laughs> Uh-oh, are they smoking? I Love Lucy benefited hugely from the lead's authentic marriage, even if their relationship had some real hurdles. For more on that, check out our deep dive into the life of Lucille Ball. But the show was rooted in reality in some surprising ways, too. Every single episode played host to one Miss Dee Dee Ball, Lucille's mother, and she had an iconic job at these tapings. When Lucy was about to get into some hilarious trouble, you could hear an audience member yelling, uh-oh, and that uh-oh woman was Dee Dee Ball herself. <laughs> and maybe you've heard that telltale uh-oh in other famous shows too. That's because the taped laughter from Lucy became a popular source of laugh track for Bewitched, I Dream of Jeannie, and more. Then of course the show gave little Desi Arnaz Jr. his first role when Lucille's pregnancy became part of the program. Sometimes there's such a thing as too authentic, like when Lucille and Desi really smoked on set. No props here, because that might violate the deal they had with tobacco giant Philip Morris, who served as the main financial backer. They indeed brought up Philip Morris whenever possible, but leave it to Lucy to cheat a bit, as she was more of a Chesterfield lady, so a stagehand would swap them out in secret. As for the famous couple of Fred and Ethel, those actors were notoriously not a bit close when the camera stopped rolling, but the characters' names were based in reality, with Fred helming from Lucille's brother, and Ethel being a tribute to Lucy's longtime pal and famed Broadway star Ethel Merman. Making History Lucille and Desi broke down barriers and showed that America could love a Cuban-Irish-American couple. Then there's all the firsts it made. Usually TV programs were filmed and aired out of New York. But as new parents, Lucille and Desi didn't want to move to the East Coast. They wanted to be around everything they knew. But back then, TV wiring didn't reach coast to coast, and recording quality could plummet. So what do you do when you reach an impasse? Invent a whole new way of filming sitcoms. Desi proposed the first use of a three camera setup for sitcoms. But that too came with its own problems. So they brought in the best in the biz. Lucille and Desi both agreed to take a cut in their salary to have money for this new technique and the talented crew it required. And then it became a standard for TV. And the Arnezes went from pay cut to the first millionaire TV stars in history. 
You may open your eyes now. <laughs> then Desi pulled another magic trick and invented the idea of reruns. When Lucille became pregnant, Desi started re-airing old episodes, sometimes with different lines and backdrops, so Lucille could have a break from shooting and raise their new addition. Trick of the Eye he was a huge name, but Desi Arnaz stood at 5 feet 9 and felt that this was way too short. So he wore 3 to 4 inch heels, taking him to a strong 6 foot. It was the only way for Lucille not to tower over him when she also wore heels. The audience never saw the big seat cushion Desi used, which settled the sitting height differences and gave him a helpful boost getting back onto those heels. The indomitable Michael Landon also had those same insecurities and adopted more height adjustment tricks. Check out our deep dive into his rather tumultuous life for more. Act of Patriotism Picture yourself far from home and full of dreams. That's the chance Desi's family took when they fled instability in Cuba for the American dream. And Desi became a very vocal American patriot when he got here. He went from seeing his family's house burn down to cleaning bird cages for a living to getting a special toast on the Ed Sullivan Show. And I don't think there's any other country in the world that could give you that opportunity. I want to say thank you. Thank you, America. His patriotism was visible in his acting or in his non-acting. When the episode Lucy Tells the Truth had Ricky lie on his income tax return, Desi flat out refused to do the episode. He didn't want anyone thinking Ricky would cheat the US government. I love mishaps. Every episode had 300 lucky people as part of the live audience. Since this theater stage TV mix was new, the show had a learning curve. They didn't want to break audience immersion by yelling cut whenever a scene ended. So sometimes the actors had to figure it out on their own. Like in the episode redecorating the Mertz's apartment, Lucy kept talking out loud about fixing the Mertz's home and relationship until Desi finally jumped in to get them back on track and watch the opening and end credits across the years, and some people's names aren't just spelled differently, they're flat out changed. Ethel has been Ethel Roberta, Ethel Louise, and Ethel May. Depending on the episode, her husband Fred has been Freddy spelled with a Y, and other times an I-E. The P Word if you can think of it, there's probably a show for it, as the TV landscape has exploded in the last few decades. But it was I Love Lucy that first broke ground for that, thanks to them embracing the dreaded P word, pregnant. By season two, Lucille became pregnant and had three heartbreaking miscarriages before that. But showing pregnant women on TV was rather taboo, especially the belly bump. So they made her pregnancy part of the show, and Desi requested help from a priest, a rabbi, and a minister to watch the related episodes for anything questionable or suspect. CBS had its own complaints. The word pregnant was, in their view, vulgar, so they could only call it expecting. Did you get everything? Yeah, I got everything. But if you don't stop having these silly cravings at 4 o'clock in the morning, I'm gonna freeze to death. For the episode, Ricky was supposed to sing when Lucy told him she was expecting. But the two had so much real emotions tied to this pregnancy, they just cried instead. Certainly a powerful moment in television history. Lucy's Italian Misery Don't you hate it when grape stomping turns deadly? Oh, oh. With that wonderful episode titled Lucy's Italian Movie, it took a lot to make happen, like the logistics of getting enough grapes and adding the disclaimer that no, grape stomping isn't the standard for making wine anymore in Italy. Then there was the issue of getting lost in translation. The actress opposite Lucille for that scene didn't understand English, so a translator explained the scene. Apparently she didn't quite get it, because when they started wrestling, the woman held Lucille's head in the grape juice and kept holding it under to the point where Lucille had trouble breathing. <laughs> And I had grapes up my nose, in my ears, and she was choking me, and I'm really beating her to get her off. Keeping it real. Arnaz lived by a simple philosophy. 
If the actors believed, so would the audience. That meant he was a stickler for realism. So that eight foot loaf of bread popping out of the oven was actually an eight foot loaf of bread. Rye bread to be specific. Lovingly made by a local bakery. Then when the gang goes deep sea fishing, those are real giant tunas that weighed over a hundred pounds. Caught straight from San Francisco's Fisherman's Wharf. All things must end. Few shows don't overstay their welcome. Sure, we'd love a great program to go on forever, but ideas run dry. I Love Lucy is one of the few that ended on a high note. In fact, it was one of just a handful to finish at the top of the Nielsen ratings, a place it held for four out of the six seasons. But after a while, they got tired of the formula. It didn't help that the main couple was having a harder time working together. We nearly got a spin-off following Ethel and Fred, but Vivian Vance did not not want to work with William Frawley for another second. And so the truly groundbreaking I Love Lucy ended while on top. From the grape smashing to the candy conveyor belt. What is the best episode of I Love Lucy that you can recall? Do you think it's the best sitcom of all time? If not, what is? Get in those comments and let's discuss some classic television. If you enjoyed revisiting I Love Lucy with us, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you never miss an episodic deep dive. From all of us here at Do You Remember, thanks very much for watching.